Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be speaking about an episode from season four, The Fledgling. It was written by Earl Hamner and directed by Harry Harris. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. And if you'd like to know when I'm going to post another video, hit that notification bell. This episode introduces the beginning of what will be John Boy's new venture, The Blue Ridge Chronicles. Mr. Johnson, played by Walter Brook, is the owner and editor of the newspaper, The Jefferson Times, that John Boy has been working, writing editorials and different articles for. Uh, Mr. Johnson has decided to sell the um, building, sell the, the paper, and uh, it's being turned into some other sort of a business, so will no longer exist. So he's letting John Boy know that uh, he won't have an opportunity to be writing for him anymore. However, he does show John Boy his original printing press that he used when he started the newspaper. And he suggests that perhaps John Boy buy the printing press. Uh, it's an enormous sum of money, $500, which of course John Boy doesn't have, but Mr. Johnson says he'll make John Boy a deal uh, allowing him to provide a down payment and then make payments of $15 a month until it's paid off. John Boy can't resist this opportunity and makes a deal with Mr. Johnson. Letting John know what his uh, decision has been, John Boy tells Daddy that he's going to need to get a full-time job in order to raise the $50 down payment that he will need. Uh, John's primary concern is not wanting John Boy to overextend himself, either time or money. Uh, John Boy promises he will not quit school, that he will still carry his class load and get his homework done and somehow add in a full-time job. John's a little skeptical, but John Boy seems determined and so that is the plan in place. Looking all over the place, John Boy eventually gets a job at the bus depot selling tickets. Of course, John Boy soon finds that juggling all of these time demands is much more than he anticipated. He's had several conversations with his professor, Professor Parks, played by Paul Jenkins, uh, who is concerned about what John Boy is taking on and doesn't want John Boy to give up writing his novel. He shares with John Boy that at one point he himself had a novel that he planned to write, but life sort of got in the way and he never did finish that book despite his good intentions. So he encourages John Boy to somehow find a way to keep all of this going and to take a look at uh, what his priorities are. John Boy is still determined to go forward, but juggling all this time, he determines that one of his best forward actions will be to get a place closer to school and his job so that he is not spending all that extra commute time to go home every night. Uh, at home, everyone's concerned about this, mama, daddy, grandma, uh, because there's that sense that once a child leaves home, it's unlikely they will ever move back home again. Um, John and John Boy share a really beautiful scene together where John gives him advice about life and uh, and it's just a very touching scene between the two of them and the recognition that this is a major next step in John Boy's transition from being a young boy and just a son to being his own man and being on his own out in the world. At the bus lunch counter, uh, John Boy engages in a conversation with Tilly, who's a wonderful character, uh, played by Lucille Benson. Uh, she makes the best burgers around, and she shares with John Boy that the secret is a touch of wine uh, in it. And uh, they, they talk about how uh, she knows the Baldwin sisters, and. Uh, that they often come in there for burgers. <laughs> so as John Boy is in pursuit of finding a place to live, um, 
Mike Paxton, who we have come across as a character since John Boy has first been attending Boatwright University initially. He was an adversary, but he has become a friend and a, and a, and a classmate. Uh, so Mike is also looking for a job, maybe. Um, a, he, his father has minimized his allowance, and so Mike is a little short on funds and is looking for a place to live that he can afford. He and John Boy end up deciding to get a place together, and they find um, a room at a boarding house, and they are going to share a room together. Having to deal with the goodbyes in the family is very tough for John Boy. Grandma says how it'll hurt her to have him gone from the house, but uh, she understands and she sends a Bible with John Boy. Likewise, Olivia, who has made food for John Boy to have, also sends him off with a Bible. Uh, as we deal with one of those scenes where everyone is saying goodbye to John Boy for now, this is actually, I noticed, the first time I had seen any of the children in this episode. Uh, so this was a case where we just weren't in very many scenes, but a very important one we were in was when everyone sort of sent John Boy off on this new adventure to living away from home. And uh, so the scene of us all saying goodbye to him and sharing a special moment, each of us with him. At work at the bus station one day, uh, we see the Baldwin sisters get off that bus and go up to the ticket counter where John Boy's working and try to have a conversation with him. They came to visit him and of course they're trying to have a conversation. People in the line behind them are saying, I need to buy a ticket, I need to get someplace. So John Boy is interacting between the conversation with the Baldwin sisters and then trying to also handle all the customers and make sure that he doesn't upset his boss. Uh, they end up going and having uh, lunch together at the ticket counter <laughs> and we once again see that the Baldwin sisters are familiar with Tilly and she with them. The next time I saw all of the children in a scene was when it is evening and they are waiting for daddy to return and I believe he's supposed to have John Boy with him uh, but John Boy wasn't able to get away. Uh, he ended up having to work that weekend so everyone is very disappointed that John Boy didn't make it home to see everyone on the weekend. An interesting scene at the boarding house where John Boy is staying and rooming with Mike Paxton, Ike and Corbeth come by. Mike has said he's gonna go to the picture show uh, to give John Boy some time to sort through uh, and, and get work done and stuff like that. So Ike and Corbeth come by and they have a, a new puppy, Clementine. And we've talked about this before, but we see this puppy here, but never see this puppy again. <laughs> and they say that they come by with a message for John Boy, but uh, then say that they're going to the picture show. And I thought that was sort of interesting. Are they taking Clementine, this puppy, to the picture show? I don't recall at that day and age. Perhaps people could take their dogs to the movies. <laughs> John Boy is crushed when he finds out from his boss at the bus depot that John Boy no longer has a job. The man who previously had the job had moved away with his family and now he's back. He has a family to support and right from the beginning John Boy's boss had said that should this man return that he would give him his job back. So John Boy then is left with no job and no way to pay for this down payment on the printing press. Completely crushed, he goes by uh, Mr. Johnson's office to let him know that um, sadly he's not going to be able to get the money together to to buy this this printing press. He finds men there, workers there, who are making the transition from uh, the paper to what the new business is going to be in this location. John Boy doesn't know what to think of this. Has Mr. Johnson just left? Uh, he goes to the room where the printing press had been. The printing press isn't there. He's completely defeated. Making his way back home after dark, John Boy is met by, by Daddy standing there, welcoming him home. He's, he's happy to have him there. John Boy is just defeated. Uh, he feel he has lost the printing press. He's lost this dream that he had to start his own publication. Uh, and he doesn't even want to come in the house. He just feels like he, he just wants to go to sleep. John says he'll have to sleep in the shed because Jason is in 
John Boy's room and, you know, hasn't moved out because they didn't know John Boy was coming home. John Boy drags himself over to the shed and goes in to discover that the printing press and everything connected with it is there in the shed. As John Boy tries to take all this in, all of the family sneaks in behind John Boy very quietly to surprise him. They all know that this has happened. And he turns around to discover all the family is there and are overjoyed to have him back and finds out that Mr. Johnson uh, came and delivered all of this because John Boy's professor had made that deposit to Mr. Johnson for the printing press because he understood John Boy's dream and wanted him to have a chance to pursue it. So Mr. Johnson said, John Boy will just have to work that out with Professor Parks. So happy ending and the beginning of John Boy's new adventure as he will now be starting the Blue Ridge Chronicles. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the season four episode, The Fledgling. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons, more of your questions with an Ask Judy, and more special guests. Thanks for watching.